Hi everyone, you're here starting with Cody. In this segment, we'll be working on block five of our quilt along using the lazy angle quilt ruler. So let's take a look at block five. So here is block five. So this is the first block where we've now, where we're now doing basically kind of like a nine patch. So we've got three rows of three smaller blocks opposed to two rows of four blocks like we did with the first four, four blocks that we've done. So here, this block is also smaller. So we switch, we'll switch how we use the ruler and which parts of the ruler we use, uh, basically measurement wise, because we are working with smaller pieces opposed to the five and a half inch here. We're now gonna work with two and a half inch. But one thing to always remember, all the blocks that we do can be made um, in six different sizes. So the first ones are finished at 10 and a half using uh, the five and a half inch cutting markings on the ruler. The ones we'll be working on now, the next six actually, are all um, six and a half inch blocks. And we're using two and a half inch uh, measurements on the ruler. So here's block number five. So let's get started. All right, everyone, here we are. And this is block number five that we've been working on. As you can see, it's about six and a half inches, which is what we're looking for. <laughs> um, and also remember, with all of our videos, all the PDF files for the patterns um, are on my blog, which the link is in the description below. Um, so once the videos have been posted, then the patterns will be available on the blog. Uh, but please make sure you watch the video because the video gives a full detail of the construction and techniques of the blocks. And as always with any of the videos, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, let's get started. So this is a fairly easy block, but it is different from the rest because it does uh, require nine separate blocks opposed to just the four. So just a little bit more. So I've already got a lot of my strips already cut just to save time because we've already done all the cutting of the strips in previous videos. So at this point, even if you're new to piecing or quilting, um, I think we've got the cutting down pat. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut from the background fabric, whatever your background fabric color is. So here, all of our strips for the next six blocks are going to be cut two and a half inches wide opposed to our five and a half inch wide strips from our previous four blocks. So here I've got my fabric doubled, which is how I normally cut everything, especially for this project. So now we're going to cut four uh, two and a half inch uh, squares. So that'll be the first thing we cut. So we're going to again use our six and a half inch ruler. And so we're gonna line that up with the two and a half inch markings here. And remember with the creative grid rulers, especially their squares, is two sides are basically an extra half an inch added to it. And then the other side is just uh, exact measurements. So we're working with a two and a half inch square. So we're just gonna line it up with this two and a half inch square here. So we're just gonna give it a cut. That's two and we need four because it's one in each corner. So here are our four squares. So now we're gonna to go to our lazy angle ruler and we're going to be cutting our large trapezoid. So we're gonna be using the two and a half inch marking located here. So at first we just lay the lazy angle ruler along the two and a half inch marking. We'll give it a cut. And now, so we've got two there, and we're gonna need four. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna rotate the ruler, and then we have our two and a half inch markings here. And we're just gonna line that up right with the left edge and the bottom edge of the ruler. Give it a cut. So there are our four background large trapezoids and our four squares. So now we're gonna move on to fabric B. So here, fabric B, we just need one square, super simple. So we don't wanna cut two layers, we just need to cut from one. And I'm gonna line 
using our six and a half inch ruler. And we're gonna line up here just like we did with the white squares. Give that a cut. We can set this aside. So now we're going to need four small trapezoids from fabric A. So I've got my two and a half inch strip of fabric A and I've already uh, cut off the salvage that was on the end. Just make sure that that raw edge is nice and straight and lined up with each other because there's two layers and of course make sure all my sides are matched up. So here we're going to line up with this marking here, this two, oh, two and a half inch right here to cut the small trapezoid. So we'll line up sides, top, bottom, cut, so it's two. So here we're going to rotate and flip and then we're going to come here and make sure we're lined up top, bottom, side and cut and make sure because we are using the back side of the ruler which is so neat about this ruler how they have markings on the back as well is there's no grip on the back so if you haven't added Andy any grippers to the front section here uh, make sure when you're cutting that it doesn't move on you because it it kind of wants to so we're in this angle so just rotate this way and we're going to line up and cut again so we'll cut make sure we're lined up with a two and a half cut so at this point that gives us six now we need to cut some more just two more and that will give us our eight so here we've got our eight small trapezoids from fabric A and then we have our four background fabrics from squares here, our one center one from fabric B and our four large uh, background trapezoids there. All right, so now we can move all of our strips out of the way. So basically we're just gonna lay everything out, pin it and then move to the sewing machine and, and start sewing. So these four are gonna stay solid. Those are going to be added towards the end. What we're going to work with first are going to be our large trapezoids. So we're going to take our fabric A and we're going to line those up with the cut edge on the large trapezoid. And remember when we do line these up, as I mentioned almost in all the other videos, we're going to have a little overhang at the top and a little overhang at the bottom. That's perfect, that's what we want. Take our little handy dandy pins and pin them together. So we'll go and do this for all four. So here we've got all four of our large trapezoids pinned to four of four out of the eight of our small trapezoids from Fabric A. So now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine, sew all these down, and then we'll come back and do some more cutting. All right. So here we're at, at the sewing machine. So now we're going to sew our trapezoids down. So remember, when we're sewing, we wanna make sure to ensure that we have enough overhang up here. When we start sewing, we wanna make sure we're using a quarter inch foot and a straight stitch seam, uh, stitch plate. And so we're gonna line up the edge of the root, I'm sorry, the edge of the foot with the edge of the fabric. And our needle should start right here. If it's starting over to the right or over to the left, then our fabric may not be centered our uh, small trapezoid may not be centered with our large trapezoid. So we want to make sure that, you're, that you readjust this top piece so our needle does start in this section here. You want to be as close to that uh, intersection of that little valley uh, as much as possible. So let's get started. All right, so we've got our pieces sewn. So now I'm going to separate them. And so we're gonna to go to the iron and we're gonna press again to the dark side, which is gonna to be 
towards this pink, our fabric A, essentially. And we're going to go press that down. So we're going to go do that for all four pieces, and then we're going to go and cut some more off of this. All right, let's go to the iron. All right, so we're here at the iron. And so I've got my pieces that I just finished sewing together, uh, got finished sewing together. So we're going to press those back and remember that we're going to make sure we press them flat, press them to the dark side and make sure that uh, we can almost see those stitches. Just so we make sure that the fabric is flat and not kind of folded over at all. So we'll go and hit those with the iron and we'll do this to all four pieces. All right. There we are, perfect. So now you can go, you can either trim these little pieces off, but we're about to go and cut another side off of all four of these squares. All right, so now we've got our pressed smaller squares. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna cut some more off of this so we can attach another piece to this from our um, smaller trapezoid. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip this over. So this is the wrong side of our little square. So you can see our seam folded over to the dark side. And now we're going to take our lazy angle ruler and we're going to essentially cut um, this side off of this little square. So basically it's going to look kind of how the original large trapezoid looked when we first cut it. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up the left side and the bottom, and we're going to lop off this side here. There we are. So when you flip it over to the right side, this is what we should have. Perfect. So we're going to go do this for the rest of the three pieces. All right, so we've got these four large trapezoids, essentially. Um, so now it's gonna basically repeat what we did before. So we're gonna take the remainder four um, smaller trapezoids from fabric A, and we're gonna sew them to the pre newly cut side of this uh, square here. And of course, make sure you have that little overhang on each end, just like that. And make sure the edges line up nicely and then we'll pin them just so they stay together when we get to the sewing machine. There we are, we've got them all pinned. So now we're ready to go sew them and uh, press them out. So I'll go sew them and I'll go press them and I'll meet you back here. All right, so I'm back from sewing and pressing. So here are our four pieces. And so just like the first time we pressed, we pressed the second piece towards the dark side as well. So you don't have that white seam or that darker seam underneath our much lighter background fabric. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that these do measure about two and a half inches. So you can take your six and a half inch rule that we've been using and line up the edges and the bottom and everything and make sure they line up all the way around with that two and a half inch mark, which they do. So what we can do here and what I like to do is I like to trim off these little dog ears just so we have a nice square. So you can use your ruler as a guide or you can use a little pair of scissors or just your rotary cutter and just cut those little pieces off. It makes it a lot easier to work with. So now we're basically ready to construct our block. It's a fairly easy block. So this is how this gets oriented. And then so these that we cut that we haven't done anything with are now coming into play. So this is our block. Super fun, super easy. Now there's another orientation that you can do with this block and I also have this in the pattern on my blog. So, but if you rotate this and these are pieces we just sew together in this direction, you get a totally different pattern. 
And only thing we did is it's the way we would sew these together um, for our block to get this different look. So for your quilt project, you can do whichever block you want, uh, but we're gonna continue um, with the pattern that we had already um, written up, which is this one. So what we're gonna do here, just like with the blocks previously, where we just had four blocks, here we've got nine, but we're still gonna work row by row. So we'll basically construct, uh, so these three together, these three together, and then these three together, press, which I'll show you, and then we'll construct those three rows and finish our block. All right, so I'll go sew all this together and I'll meet you at the ironing board. Here we are with the pieces all sewn together and now we just need to press them. So here, we're gonna press them a little bit differently than we're used to pressing. Uh, we're not gonna necessarily press every piece to the dark side, uh, mainly because there's dark sides all down the center uh, for the most part. So what we're gonna do, and we wanna get all the pieces to lock in nicely, so we're actually gonna press to the lighter side for this one. So we're gonna press so those seams are moving away um, and towards the piece that has no seam, so it will lay nice and flatter. So we're gonna press the bottom and the top so that the seams will be underneath this lighter fabric. So we can go and press those. And now for the center one, we're gonna press them so they're going in. So two reasons for that. One, because we want to, when we sew these together, we want these seams to go this way and these seams up here to go the opposite direction. And one of the reasons we chose, another reason why we chose to do it this way is because we're pressing um, two pieces that have seams joining here. They will have them press inward towards the piece of fabric that doesn't have any seams. So again, just like we did here, it will allow it to lay flatter. So we'll just go ahead and press those. So now what we're going to do when we piece them together, which is what I'm going to do after we leave from the ironing board, is so I'll lay this here. So when we come up here, we have two seams going in opposite directions. So that little notch will line up beautifully there and the same thing for this side up here. So it will allow the um, seams and everything to line up beautifully and to lay nice and flat. So let me go sew these three pieces together and we'll be back at the ironing board so it can press our final block and then we'll be done. Okay, here we are, we're back from sewing. So we've got our seams, got our points lined up. So what we're gonna do here we are going to press our seams open like we've been doing. So, but now we don't have one seam run down the middle, we've got two. So we're gonna do just like we've done in the past, just with both seams. So we're gonna split that seam. It'll get to lay nice and flat. And we're just gonna press right down that seam. Use a little bit of that steam to help it lay flat. Steam is magic. And once we're done pressing, we will be done. You can always take it to your um, your cutting board or your cutting mat, <laughs> your cutting mat, and check the size to make sure that it does uh, measure six and a half inches. Other than that, you're all finished. So this was block number five, um, quite simple. And so we did use the two and a half inch strips to cut, or we cut two and a half inch strips to create this size. Um, you could do one and a half, which will make it a lot smaller, or you can go all the way up to six and a half inch um, strips using the lazy angle ruler. So hopefully you enjoyed making this block um, with me as much as I've enjoyed making them. And this one and all the ones before this, of course. Um, and so remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course now you can go and check out the blog, which is in the description below, so you can get the, writ the written pattern, and there's dozens of pictures in every pattern that I post, which each video every week. All right, so stay tuned for the next block next week, and as always, happy sewing.